floss tube community um it's christine stitch all the things today is april 17th uh tax day in the united states um sorry if you owed and congratulations if you're getting a refund um this is floss tube video number 23 for me can you believe that i just i blows me away um welcome to my channel if you're new if you're coming back and spending some more time with me thank you for doing that and wanting to hang out a bit um i want to say thank you i finished the project bags i posted them and they all sold out so fast um, I actually had a couple that I think probably the picture might have gotten overlooked because when I finished with the day, I got everything um, invoiced, everybody paid like that. So I was able to get labels printed and mail everything out towards the end of the day. And I did a quick little like thank you video and just there's two bags left. Um, and I think that picture must have been missed because as soon as I posted that they were snatched up. Um, so thank you to everyone who bought a bag and I'm really sorry if you missed it. Um, I, I'm, I've had a couple people ask me if I'm going to take orders. I'm not doing that right now. I just spent all of last year doing that and essentially the first couple months of this year recovering from, from that. Um, and, uh, my blog followers, followers will know that I really struggled, um, with that. Um, I just watched Julie, um, Gulf Coast Stitches. Um, her video and she was talking about a people pleaser type a personality Julie, I feel you girl same and All of last year I was taking orders and I, I want to get people their stuff right away um, So I wouldn't send an invoice until bags were made because that doesn't feel right to me um, To make someone pay for a product that's not even made and so I spent the entire year frantically trying to sew bags because I wanted people to get their order immediately, right away. Um, and it was really difficult and really hard on me. Um, and I'm, I'm just saying that to explain why I'm not taking orders right now. Um, I will probably do something like this again. And I know my quilty twin, Sarah, is laughing her butt off right now because um, I go through this of, I, I can't sew these bags anymore. It's too, too much for me to immediately after I finish sewing, I'm already planning when I'm going to start sewing some more. So yeah, Sarah, keep laughing. You know, you know me girl. Um, so I probably will. I had several requests for some holiday fabrics and I will probably do that. I had many requests for more Beauty and the Beast and more of the Las Elegantes women. Um, and so I may end up sewing a bag here or there and just accumulating them over time in a more manageable way than trying to do how I did it. Um, because this year is busy for me and my family. Um, my son is graduating high school. He's shipping off to the Navy um, RTC in, uh, and that's the recruit training center in the middle of the summer. His graduation is scheduled um, towards the end of the fall. So, and then of course my daughter starting her senior year of high school. So. It's a busy year for us, a lot of transition um, with one one child moving out, moving on with his life and getting the other one who's got lofty goals and plans. Um, man, that girl wishes she could be um, in nursing school right now and on with her life. So we're going to be kind of busy with the kids. Um, speaking of Kelly, thank you to everyone who left positive, encouraging comments about her um, and not making, passing her test, her driver's test the first time around. She nailed it the second time around. Um, and every day when she leaves, I, I give her, you know, her goodbye hug and, and, um, tell her have a good day and drive safe. Um, so she's doing really well. She's very happy to have that independence of going to work having her own car, being able to run around and do all of that stuff. And um, I'm really proud of her and her ambition. Um, she's working in an assisted living uh, home here in town. She, and I think I, some of you may remember I mentioned before, she got a certified nursing assistant certif certification, but at the assisted living home, they don't call them that. But she's already experienced her first call in for the very first holiday that um, came up, which was Easter. Um, and then the week after she had to, they called her in, she was sick. 
Um, they called her in to work a double. and No, she was sick on Easter and came in. She let them know, I'm sick. Um, do you still want me to come in? I'll come in. And they said, as long as you wear a mask, cause she wasn't running a fever or anything. Um, and then the following weekend they called her and said, can you work in the morning? And she said, well, I'm scheduled for the afternoon. Do you still want me to come in? And they said, yeah. <laughs> so she had her first double. Um, so I just sort of chuckled and said, welcome to the beginning of a career in the nursing field. She's super excited. So anyway, thank you for your well wishes for her. She's she's really on her way. Um, let's see. I I wrote notes. Let's see if I can stick to them and read them this time. Um, oh, I wanted to thank a lot of you who encouraged me to stop apologizing for everything. Um, it's the people pleaser in me that makes me say sorry for everything um, all the time. And it drives people crazy. I actually ended up working with my best friend and her mom, who's one of my best friends. Um, we worked in a dermatologist's office in the histology lab. So we were basically preparing samples um, for um, the pathologist to read them. We'd get the excisions or the biopsies and we'd process them, get them put on slides, all that stuff. Um, that was an interesting job. Anyway, the room we were in was very narrow. Um, it was like, I would say maybe six, seven feet, counters running on both sides. Um, the whole length of the room, which was probably 10 feet long, maybe 12 at the most. And there's three women, three of us in there. One side had the sink, some place where you'd um, prepare the samples to go in their little cassettes for processing, and then two computer stations. And then on the other side of the room was the machine where you, it's called an embedding machine setup, where you embed the samples into wax, paraffin, and, um, and then the uh, uh, microtome, I think that's, I can't remember anymore what it's called, but um, the machine where you cut them, put them on slides, all that, and the processor. So counter space full and narrow space to walk through. Can you imagine working with me and constantly hearing sorry every time we bumped? Because there was a lot of bumping going on, people trying to walk around and move around each other in this very small room. <laughs> My friend's mom got so annoyed one day because I'd say sorry for every little thing. And she looked at me and she said, if you say that one more time, I'm going to the dollar store to get a spray bottle and I'm going to spray you in the face like a cat every single time you say I'm sorry. <laughs> now, I believe that woman would do exactly what she said. So I stopped saying I'm sorry. Um, but it's hard for me. So know that I, I try. I try sometimes and other times I forget and don't work on it. But it's the people pleaser in me. I'm going to say sorry for every little thing. But thank you for encouraging me and letting me know. You don't have to apologize for that. Um, let's see. I did not watch a lot of floss, tuber, uh, floss tubers this past week. Um, I, I just was so busy. I didn't have time. And so I'm a little discouraged because now I'm behind again on everybody I was caught up with. But I will say that I did actually spend some time watching some new to me floss tubers um i happened to see like floss tube video one recently posted or two posted a week ago and so i jumped on those people because i uh, jumped on their videos uh because i thought man i can catch them right at the beginning and and be caught up so the first one was linda kleindenst now I, linda i'm sorry if i said your last name wrong um she leaves the kindest comments. And so I watched her video. She is working on a Paula Bond piece. I forget the exact name, but I know it's got Rose of Sharon in the name. And I love it because it has a vintage treadle singer or vintage treadle sewing machine, I should say. It doesn't mean it's a singer, but it's black in the background. And I just think that's the neatest thing. I mean, you show me a vintage sewing machine and I love it. So Linda, that piece is beautiful. And she's working on some other pieces. Um, she's got a beautiful hay that she's working on. Um, another 
new to me, and I believe, um, I'm pretty sure that uh, Pam and Steph mentioned them already, is Snug Harbor Crafts. Now, that's Debbie and Kefren. Um, it's a mom and daughter team, and they are so fun to watch together. Um, and Kefren, she leaves um, actual makeup, some makeup beauty tips, I should say. And when she does that, I call my daughter in to watch because my daughter loves that. Um, so those are great tips. Thank you for leaving those. Um, they have the greatest energy. Um, so I, I really enjoy watching them. Now, at first, um, Kefren didn't, she wasn't stitching. And then she started something, a piece. Um, man, I wish I could remember what it was, but I've forgotten already. But uh, of course, you can't do floss two videos and not eventually get sucked into the stitching. Um, so I love those two women. Go check them out and give them a watch. Um, another and the last new to me person that I, I started watching was Shauna from Adelaide Cottage. Now, she, she her channel is normally a knitting podcast and there may be a few other crafts in there. Um, but I, I noticed mostly a lot of knitting videos, but she's just started doing the floss tubing videos and she, she's great. Um, I really enjoyed watching her. Unfortunately, I didn't write down any, um, project that she was working on at the time. And now I can't remember cause it's been like three days and I can't even remember what we had for dinner last night, but I do know that I really enjoyed watching hers. Um, I think she has two floss tubes out, but if you're a knitter, you need to go check out her channel anyway. Um, so I really enjoyed spending time with, um, those, um, four women. Um, and I hope maybe you'll go check them out. As always, I'll be linking, everything below because uh, I like to do that. Um, let's get into what I've been working on this week. First off is whips. I wanted to get all of Santa Sleigh Works done and started and um, and have be working on the next cottage, but I did not. Um, this is Santa Sleigh Works. I just got the house and just the other day I finished the windows in the house. Um, and I can't even remember where I was on this the last time I showed you. I may have actually showed you the house, but the windows weren't stitched. I, I truly don't remember or if it was just blank. But that's as far as I've gotten on that. Um, I'm a little disappointed, but I've been tired in the evenings. And rather than wanting to stitch, I just sit there and watch Netflix or something with my husband. Now, one of my old whips, my oldest whip, she came out to play. And that is my burlesque zombie portrait. Um, I just love her. All I really did um, was, oops, put in some of the darker coloring stitches here, all of these stitches, and a little bit down here, and then this black, which is going to be a bat. Um, oh, I'm so sorry about the needle minder. <sighs> sorry. Um, I don't want to edit or re-record. Um, I usually hide those things. And I'm, I'm let me take it off because I'm probably going to still talk about her. So sorry. Um, anyway, she I brought her out to play because um, Cozy Egg, Michelle, and Eclectic Possessions, Emily, they have what's called Dark 13 Stitching. So on the 13th of every month, you get out a dark piece, a uh, Halloween piece, or whatever and you you stitch on that now i mean to stitch on her every single 13th of the month but i always forget dark 13 stitching until after um after the 13th it's like the 14th and then i'm like oh crap i forgot again this this month i happened to see um uh, michelle post something about it and i was like oh i'm so glad she did that because i'm gonna grab out my burlesque zombie piece um, and so I did work on her a bit and I was really happy to get a few stitches in on her. Um, she's been sorely neglected. I really wanted to finish her this year. Not even sure that that's going to happen. And she comes from this book, Twisted Stitches by Phil Hartman. Um, she's one of the pictures on the back cover. Um, now, I don't know if Maui Jen, Dark Side Stitcher, has seen this book, but I was... I grabbed it and it kind of flipped and fell open and I saw this and I thought of, I thought of you. I thought of you, Jen. Lizzie Borden took an ax and then there is, oops, over here. 
um, this axe pillow, bloody pillow, and then this pillow up here has splotches <laughs> right there. Um, bloody stitchy splotches. It's super fun, um, but I thought of you, Jen, and if this is a pattern you want, let me know because the patterns are in the back of the book. I'll send it to you because um, I don't know that I'll ever stitch that, but uh, yeah. Okay. Um, oh, another whip that I ended up working on was I wanted to, um, to see how rusty my paper piecing skills were. So I ended up, and someone asked me, um, Andrea asked me or Andrea, I don't, I still don't know if it's Andrea or, or Andrea. Um, but she asked me what kind of thread I like to use for um, English paper piecing. And um, so I, I thought, oh, I, I need to make sure that this one that I used before, I, I had as good of an experience as I thought I had. So I grabbed some little hexagons out and started stitching. Now, I only stitched all of these part the flowers around. They're not stitched together. But do you see no stitches no stitches i was so proud of myself that you can't really hardly see the stitching at all yeah oh it just started to focus let me do that again let me see will it work oh good grief yeah i there is a thread i absolutely adore it's called superior bottom line thread. Um, and it is, <laughs> yeah, it's a 60 weight thread. Now thread sizes are just like our needle sizes. The, um, bigger the number is the smaller the thread is. So this is a great thread and it's my favorite because you can't really, you can't really see the stitches. Of course, you, you've got to be careful how you do your stitching so that when you are doing it, you're just barely getting a few threads along the top. But um, let's see. Yeah, Andrea asked me about the thread. Now, Julie of um, Kansas City Girl and Colorado World. Hi, Julie. She asked me um, what kind of book I, I would um, recommend. I have several hexagon books. They're all great for showing... Um, I just realized I didn't pull one of them out. They're all great for showing, um, basic, basic techniques. Um, one is Hexagogo. Um, this is by Tasha Brewer, Brewsher. I don't even know that I said that right. But the one I absolutely love is All Points, Points Pat, Patchwork by Diane Gilliland. Um, this is a great book, but the book shows a lot on, um, in the beginning techniques and such, but then, and, and techniques for putting different, like different kinds of paper piecing together, um, different ways that you can use your paper piecing, um, like that tablecloth with a, a windy even paper piece border. Um, there's not a lot of complete finishing, but it does, this book does go through a lot of the different techniques, different shapes, kind of how with uh, the challenges of certain shapes, like if you have curves, how to put them together. So I really, really like this book. Um, but there are are great books out there, uh, many others uh, that I actually have on my wish list. Um, so. As far as though, because someone asked me about the type of thread, I want to tell you, um, basically any type of thread that you want to use for, um, English paper piecing will work. I've used cotton. This is 50 weight cotton, which is thinner than the 40 weight cotton at, with success, great success. I have used a monofilament. This is, I don't, can you see how it's? It's super thin um, and fiddly. Uh, it works well, but this stuff, you know, it's monofilament thread. It wants to go all over the place. Um, you just have to, you just have to really hold it and have smaller um, thread lengths if you want to use that. And this is great for when you need an invisible stitch, uh, if you have multiple colors or whatever. Um, and then um, this 
cotton monofilaments, polyester thread. Um, and then I've used Superior. Um, I think, is this just, yeah, just polyester. It's not a blend. Um, a 40 weight Superior thread. But my favorite is definitely the 60 weight um, polyester threads called um, the bottom line thread. Um, my other secret to it, to this, is to use a milliner's needle. It's a size 10. It is super thin. Long needle. Sorry for my ugly nails. Um, it is a long needle. It is an inch and a half long. Um, and the eye is super tiny. So I always use this needle threader because it has on this side um, a, for small eye needles. This side is for bigger eye needles. So you just stick your needle in there. You take a piece of thread. It's actually got a cutter on it right here so you can cut your thread you put it in this thing a lot of people don't have success with these because they don't know you don't just lay your thread in there you have to pull it down till you hear or and feel a tiny little click into place and then you click this and pull the thread until one end comes out and there you go, threaded needle. Um, I use this thing all the time when I'm having to bind quilts or I do this um, English paper piecing. Love these needles, they're so thin, they glide right through. Um, so those are my secrets, my things that I use for um, English paper piecing. I also tend to use glue. I used to, as you can see, some of these are thread basted around the, um, the template, but now I use glue. Um, and I have these holes for when I would use a pin to hold this in place while I was putting the, um, you know, uh, basting the, the thread around it. And then I, oops, take the pin out. Um, these holes are also good for when you're trying to take your papers out. You put a little crochet hook in there and you pull it right out. Um, just a little, since I had a couple questions about, um, the EPP stuff that, um, I thought those tips would help. Also... I always use gray, light, light gray. Why? Because any of these colors, the gray blends right in. Now, if you get real high contrast fabrics like black, navy blue, um, you may see this because it's light. But anytime you've got some, some regular lighter colors, a gray is always going to blend with all of that. If you have white, it's too high of a contrast. But a soft gray is always going to be a good go-to thread for your um, trying to match match a thread to your your pieces. Okay, so moving on, um, haul. I don't I don't have anything except my um, and I dropped a paper. My Fiberlicious fabric of the month came in, and this is just simply gorgeous. Um, it's a blue base. You can't really see the the different there's actually some green in here and some pinks and just gorgeous smudging in that um it's it's really really beautiful it reminds me of like a mermaid and ocean sort of thing and this one was called <laughs> i dropped the paper on the floor so i gotta look uh poseidon's cave my son would love that he adores poseidon um okay that was it for purchases and that's just a monthly subscription so i don't really count that as haul that's just one of my subscriptions so no haul but i was overwhelmed with stitchy kindness um i'm still just <sighs> thank you so much for all of you who watch a video and think i i'd like to send her a, a gift just to say thank you for the video i had someone Watch the last video where I said that I didn't really find anything from market that I had to get, except for that Red's Treehouse, um, but that I, I and I love the Hands Across the Sea samplers, but I didn't need to buy any of them right now. But the one Hands Across the Sea sampler that I absolutely adore was Jennifer Gilbert, 1818. She messaged me on Instagram. Her name is Lee. Sydney on Instagram and she said I have that can I get your address I'll send it to you and I was like oh my gosh thank you um let me know how much how much for it and how much shipping is and she said no it's a gift 
and I looked at her profile. She lives in Australia. You know how much international postage is? Um, I asked her, could I please pay something because I, I, and I don't know that I said this to her, but that just does not feel right to accept a gift where someone is giving you a chart that's already a pricey chart um, and then is going to pay that kind of shipping. So she said, sure, you know, if you want to pay shipping, I'll let you. And I was greatly relieved. Um, and it arrived the other day and you guys... She sent a sweet note with it, and I think I dropped it on the floor with my other paper. Um, I, uh, dumbfounded that anyone would want to do this. Lee, thank you so much. You guys, these charts are amazing. And I know that if you have one of these, you already know that. But I opened this up. I pulled it out of the sleeve, and I mean, there's... All of this description about Jennifer, about the area, um, where she's from, um, I mean, pages. It was completely fascinating. And also, here's the inside. This is just gorgeous. It's the colors. I wish, I don't know how well you can see them, but the blues and the pinks, stunning. Just stunning. Um, and I'm going to say in this chart, there are annotations all over the chart um, to help you know um, where you do chain stitching or satin stitches or um, stem stitches. Um, the charts are spectacular in their work um, in all of the detail that they put in it. But on the bottom of every single page, now in the history, they noted um, authors from the two authors from the area, and one of them was Winston Graham. And on the bottom of every page of the the chart pattern, there is a quote from any of his books, uh, any several of his books. And I just found that to be a completely lovely little touch to this book. So, Lee, thank you so much for your generosity and kindness and taking the time to even go to the post office and put an international mail package together. Um, that's a pain. Um, I appreciate so much that you thought enough to, to want to send this to me. Um, it is beautiful. I don't know when I'm going to start stitching it, but I'm thinking probably, um, it could be a birthday start for me in August. I'm looking forward to that. I'm not going to be stitching this um, with the silks. Um, I am hoping to gather from my Victorian Motto sampler shop threads and um, hopefully whatever comes in, I can pull from that. Um, or I'll be looking at Nancy's um, flosses and seeing if there's some blues and uh, purples, pinks that are close to these, the DMC conversion, because they do give you that and, um, and using those flosses. Uh, because I do want to use some special flosses, but the silk is just a lot. Um, the next thing I got was actually a thank you. It was from Leslie, Fat Cat Flossing. Check out her channel. If you're not watching her, go look at her sweet baby kitties. Anyway, I get a package. Look at this card with these little fairies. I just, it's adorable. This one right here, just love it. And she left me the sweetest note thanking me for some fabric I sent her. This is her gift that she sent me for sending her fabric. She, it came it all wrapped up in this little paper in this bag and it's stunning it's just beautiful this is copper and i don't know how you say this but z dzi uh tibetan z zai i don't know beads and um it's actually on here and pyrite I hope I say these right. Leslie, correct me down below if I didn't. And, um, and um, of course, the, the copper. And she says she hopes this is to my taste. Yes, this is gorgeous. It fits. It, it matches this perfectly, that copper color. And look at this right here, the clasp area, this filigree look. It's just stunning. 
I just, oops, I went the wrong way. Just love it. Leslie, thank you so much. Just gorgeous. Um, I do like to wear beaded necklaces and stuff. I, um, I got some a while back from uh, a woman's, uh, one of my friends, her name's Jenny. Her mom, uh, Jenny was my pastor's wife. Um, she's pastor's wife to, to a different church now. Um, and her mom, Paula, sweet, sweet woman. She would make a lot of beaded necklaces and things um, for her and her husband. They were missionaries to the Philippines. They do like a, they'd sail on their boat to different ports and pass out Bibles and stuff like that. And, um, and that was their mission field. And she would make some jewelry to help pay for the expenses for, you know, doing sailing around. Um, and uh, they go and help build homes and whatnot. Jenny was raised in the Philippines for quite a while because their family was missionaries there. So anyway, I bought a lot of beaded things, necklaces, jewelry, and stuff. And so I wear them and I think of Paula because Paula passed unexpectedly a couple of years ago. Ms. Paula. Um, and she's just a wonderful woman. But anyway, she's the one who got me into wearing um, some stones and beaded things. And so this was right up my alley. Um, thank you, Leslie. Uh, that went on a little bit long. And one of the last things I got was from Golden Stitcher 3, um, Susan on Instagram. She watched my videos and she watched the one where I had the Just Cross Stitch Halloween, annual Halloween issue CD. She messaged me. She asked me if I would like the 2009 issue. Yeah, I can't. I, I, I was like, oh my gosh. I'll pay you for that because I, I haven't been able to find these. And I, when I started my Just Cross Stitch subscription, I missed the earlier years. Um, and I mentioned that before. And um, I said, how much? She's like, no, it's a, it's a gift. Well, I don't know that she said it with a Susan, Susan. Susan, I don't know if you said it with that inflection, but I'm adding that. Uh, dramatization by Christine. Um, <laughs> such a nerd sometimes. Okay, anyway. Uh, if I dramatized all of the conversations I had with people, it would be hysterical. Anyway, she said, she typed. <laughs> I'm so distracted now. She's like, no, I appreciate the Floss 2 videos and I enjoy watching them and I'd like to send it. And then she offered to go look for more magazines. And I was like, oh my gosh. Um, she offered um, Christmas ornament and I, I told her that I actually don't stitch those. But watch me in like four years. I'm going to be like, I missed all the Christmas ornament. Anyway, she sent me this. Can we all just take a moment right now and appreciate this witch boot? Oops. Still getting used to this camera, people. Yeah, I love that witch boot. If there's going to be an ornament I'm going to make, it's going to be that witch boot. But I went through and there were three patterns that I was like, I got to make these immediately. Well, not immediately, but they are definitely going to be made. This pomegranate tapestry, I love that. And I don't know what it is. I think it's probably the colors, the, the pillow they made it into. I, it's just gorgeous. Um, this one right here is part of a, um, a seasonal tree series. And this is gorgeous. These colors. Uh, what is this called? Once upon a tree fall. Um, it's a Jeanette Douglas seasonal series. And those stars are just, just love them. Cause they're like Missouri quilt stars, except the, the tips of the stars aren't different colors. It's all just, you know, well, sort of, it's got variegated floss. So I guess it is. And then the last one, well, not the last one. There are quite a few things in here I want to stitch, but this one I have to is Halloween revelry. And this is from uh, primitive needle. How how amazing is that? I just love it. I love the witch. I love the cats. I love the jack-o'-lanterns. Spectacular issue. Um, and she sent me a gorgeous card. Look at this. This is just the envelope. That peacock, the back. I wish I could get the metallic to show up. Maybe there, yeah so gorgeous she left me a sweet sweet note in time inside 
in time. Um, Susan, thank you so much. I so appreciate this. Um, Leslie, thank you for the thank you. Uh, just amazing. And Lee, thank you for the chart. I, if you were to ask me what rocked my world this week, it would be the generosity of people. Um, you know, my, my husband keeps the news on a lot and I try not to listen to it, try to ignore it. And all I can say is that if you ever want your faith restored in humanity, go to the stitchy community, go to the crafty community and just, <clears throat> just see how amazing and giving and kind and how big everyone's hearts are. It's just spectacular. Okay. Whew. I normally am not too big of a crier and look at the tears. Um, <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> um, okay. So plans. My plans are to finish um, the Santa Sleigh Works part of Santa's Village and move on to the next one. Um, I'm not going to stitch on anything else till those two things are done. And April is flying by. And I, I may not make it back to my Chatelaine in time. But if I do, if I get these two done, um, Chatelaine is up next until the end of April. Um, my other plan is because I told you about the Brimfield block that I bought... Um, I want to uh, get to work on practicing um, putting one of these blocks together. I wasn't exactly sure which fabric line I wanted for this until I remembered my mom and dad gave me a gift certificate to um, the Fat Quarter Shop um, <clears throat> last year, the year before for my birthday, and I bought this Fat Quarter bundle. Now, I wish I could show you how amazing this fabric is, and I'd almost want you all to go... Um, Google it. It's by Flory and Finch. And it's called Oasis. My camera's struggling. And these fabrics, the greens, there's some light teals in there, more bright greens. And I don't know that you can see it, but there is metallic all through this, this fabric. Um, some whites, these corals, be still my heart, and some of these lovely little lavenders, purplies ones, and then of course the one of the main prints. I think these these fabrics would look really really beautiful in this block, and so I am um, I'm gonna do one block. I'm gonna save this in case I don't ever get tired of making this quilt. Because remember, I don't want to get worn out on making this by the time my Tula Pink De La Luna comes in. So I am going to um, work on one block and then sort of save this fabric um, and see how I like it and then see if I want to make a whole quilt from it. If I don't, I'll probably make just a, a mini quilt with this, this fabric. Um, let's see. In other news, quilt world, uh, quilt world, mm. <laughs> in the in the floss tube community, in the stitchy community, um, I'm sure you guys have heard by now, Julie of Gulf Coast Stitcher, uh, Stitches, Stitcher, Julie, your names. Um, she has opened up her own online shop and um, she's, she's posted some videos. I'm behind. Um, I fessed up to that on her most recent video today. Um, did one of you guys give her a little bit of problem about saying you guys? Did you guys give her trouble? On, I don't know who did that. I already apologize for saying you guys. I hope not. Uh, but I, I think that happened. I don't know. Julie, I say you guys all the time. Um, and it's like I said before, I apologize for it. But it's a non-gender phrase. So, yeah. Um, anyway, Julie has a new shop open. It's not new now because it's been around for like, what, three weeks, a month? Um, go check out her shop. She's got, um, she's getting... A lot more inventory and she just got a whole bunch of inventory in from the primitive hair now there is a primitive hair chart I'm going to insert a picture of that here now this chart I saw it it was an, a market exclusive from last year it came as a kit and the kit was like 49 49 dollars 
and I didn't want to buy the whole kit. I didn't want to throw down 50 bucks for that. But that chart, I wanted that chart so bad. And so I messaged, um, I messaged, um, uh, Isabel, I think it's Isabel, uh, and asked, is it going to be sold separately? Um, and just got a, a message uh, thanking me for the interest in her charts. And I think I probably worded it wrong or oddly or something, because I think she said, you know, you, it was a market exclusive. You can get it at shops. Um, so I didn't make clear that I just was wanting the chart itself. Julie posted the chart itself today. I just got done texting Jill of A Stitch in Time. I just got done texting her saying I spent way too much money. I have got to curb my spending. No more spending at all. And then I saw Julie show, show that chart on her video and say it was in stock. Do you know what I did, right? Buy it now. I need that. Because I've been wanting it. So... Yeah, that will be on its way to me. And Julie is um, working hard to get everything shipped out as fast as she can. So I've no doubt I will be showing that. Well, I will have it in a couple days. And um, yeah, that will be in my next video update as as haul. Uh, but please know that I really have been overspending. It has been a problem for me. Um, I'm going to have a moment of honesty. Um, I, I like... You could tell by my name, I like to get all the things. Um, and so I've been asking my husband to work with me on, on my budget. My husband is fantastic with money. Um, he's the saver, I'm the spender. Um, and I have my own my own thing going on. And I went to him and I said, listen, I'm, I'm having trouble. I, I, I need some help. Um, and so I asked him, would you be my accountability person? And he looked at me like this this could make us go into a bad place. And I told him, I, I'm not looking for a reprimander. I'm just looking for someone at the end of the month to look over all, all my, um, my financial situation with me and for someone to just be accountable to. Um, and so he agreed to do that as long as I, and he promised not to be like one of these, you are not supposed to. Um, and so it's, it's been working out well for us, except I've just been spending too much. And I admit that. And I'll, I see that at the end of the month when we go through all the numbers together and I'll tell them, oh, I just, I just spent too much, too much again. Um, and, and uh, there's no reprimanding. It's just, okay, well, what are we going to do for next month? So that's my moment of honesty. Um, actually, the conversations are much longer with my husband, um, but I do need to rein in my spending. Um, I've been able to get debt free thanks to him, and so I need to keep it there. I don't want, I have to pay everything off every month, and which is why sometimes you'll see me selling bags. I may sneak in bags every now and then if, I, if I've just messed up again. Um, and by messed up, it's make poor choices in what I need to buy need want to buy so um the the haul portions of my videos will probably be a lot less um I forgot I had thrift store haul <laughs> um yeah I set them right here this is actually two weeks worth of thrift store haul because I forgot to um I forgot to talk about them in in the last video which was long anyway uh so Okay, some thrift store haul. Fun times. Um, I found this book, The Cross Stitcher's Bible by Jane Greenoff, and I found The Cross Stitcher's Bible. This is like a companion to this. She wrote this, got a lot of really positive um, comments on all of this, and so she wrote, she wrote this one. And look at that, just right there. That cover sampler just rocked my world um and this is really great there's even a band sampler that i would actually consider doing really really loved it uh, her books are great and i was super happy to find the cross stitchers bible look at this little floral sampler super happy to find this book Till I got home and realized I found this book at another cross stitch store. 
the new cross stitchers bible i flipped through them and there's actually different motifs in each book so it wasn't a waste to get the older um the previous um uh printing um but yeah that was funny to me um now this one i actually got thinking of pam and i shoot i forgot to message her because i i set all this stuff down and i forgot I just forgot. Um, so Pam, if you see this, if this is something you'd like, um, I bought it thinking of you, but of course it's something that could be a giveaway if this is not your thing. Um, lighthouses. These are all of the lighthouses, glassers, sorry, um, featuring 112 miniature lighthouses, golf. Uh, I'm so annoyed they put the sticker right over the description. So, I can't really see all of the description, but Gulf Coast, Atlantic Coast, Great Lakes, and Pacific Coast. And I was trying gently to pull up the sticker, but I couldn't. Plus two alphabet, alphabets for personalizing. Um, yeah, I was thinking of Pam when I saw this and thought I need to message her. Um, and hopefully I will message her before this posts. But Pam, if this is something you want, um, you let me know. I'll pop this in the mail to you. Um, something I got just because it was um, memories for me. Holly Hobby chart. My mom used to um, get me Holly Hobby stuff all the time. I had a Holly Hobby tea set. I had it for years and ended up, um, I don't know what happened to it. I'm going to have to make my mom one of these charts. This one right here. My mom plays a violin in um, the Mariposa Symphony Orchestra. She would love that. But yeah, Holly Hobby was a big part of my life growing up. And so I, uh, these aren't my style at all, but I just couldn't leave that sitting there. Um, and this is um, something I got a couple weeks ago or two weeks ago. Donna Cooler's um, 555 Christmas Cross Stitch Designs. Um, these are really neat, these books. I'm not big on getting motifs, but she puts a lot of the motifs into like a big sampler. Um, and so that's not all of them, but you know, makes a sampler of, of some of the stuff she shows in here. This one, it looks like a lot of work, but this sampler looks like it would be a lot of fun. Um, and it's got an alphabet you know, in there, that's what all the words are. Um, so this I thought was really pretty. The nativity sampler, uh, not something I will stitch, but I, I really thought it was pretty. Um, and then I think there's a Santa sampler in here. Yeah, this one's fun. Um, so this was a really neat book to get. This is a really sweet sampler. Now these are all so much work. I don't know that I'd ever get to them, but I really liked having all those little motifs and seeing how she works them into a bigger sampler. It's great for ideas and whatnot. Now this was uh, stupid price stickers. Donna Cooler's 555 Fabulous Cross Stitch Patterns. And this one had the same thing going on inside um, with different motifs and then make a sampler out of it. That was some holiday stuff. Um, Heaven and Nature little sampler. So it's really neat to me. Uh, I really like when they, when you can find a, a book that'll give you ideas and, and patterns for stitching motifs and then show you how to put it all together. Cause I'm not very creative like that. Uh, what was this one? Hearth and home. So these are all the, you know, this is the sampler and, and it'll break down all the motifs in the following pages. Um, heart and soul. And this friends and family. And the last one, thank you for indulging me, not like you had a choice. 
flora and fauna. Oops. <laughs> I'm so bad at that. Um, this one here had, uh, over here you can see, isn't that little fox just the cutest? And the skunk. I'm not a fan of skunks or anything, but that was just cute. Um, and the other chart I got a couple weeks ago, this was in the a basket and my husband said, is this one that I should look out for if you're not around? And I looked at it and was like, if it says the prairie schooler, buy it. Um, and I, this one was uh, 99 cents, I think. So I'm not a, a big prairie schooler fan or anything like that, but these are cute little flower motifs would be great for little ornaments and whatnot. Um, but if you are, I'm going to give this away. Um, so if this is something that you're interested in, then write down below, I'd love to stitch the Prairie Schooler Garden Blooms. No, just I'd love to stitch the Garden Blooms. Write that below. Um, it's open to everyone. My fingers are crossed it's going to be the U.S. because the last two giveaways have all been international. Um, but I'm not going to limit this one uh, because it's just a single, it's a document, so it'll go cheap. Um, which means if you're international, please don't expect other little things thrown in because um, just sending documents can be cheaper than, um, than when you start adding stuff you have to declare in the package. Um, so yeah, if anybody is interested in that Prairie Schooler, just write, I'd like the, I'd like to stitch the garden blooms and my next update video, I will do a drawing. Um, so, okay, hopefully this video, I thought it would be 30 minutes long. I'm at 49. Um, have a wonderful week. Um, happy stitching. Thank you for... Thank you for joining me. Thank you for hanging out with me, spending some time with me. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your likes, your subscriptions um, to my channel, subscribing. Um, you y'all know me. I get all tongue tied at the end of the videos. Please just know that I appreciate you. Um, I appreciate the, the private messages, um, the emails, um, all of that, please know that I, I do enjoy and appreciate them. And I thank you for all of them. I thank you for, for just all of your encouragement and, um, for wanting to spend some time and hang out with me. Um, happy stitching. Um, have a wonderful week. Stitch all the things. Bye.